Planning Commission meeting for March 2015 to order. Could we please have a roll call, um, Absolutely. Mr. Moser? Chairman Powell? Absent. Commissioner Chappell? Absent. Commissioner Coffin? Here. Commissioner Ogden? Here. And Commissioner Wood? Here. We do have a quorum. Yay. Um, obviously, unless you want to be public, we have no public comments. We do not have anyone signed up under public comments. Very well. Um, I would make a motion or entertain for a motion that we table. Well, who was everybody was here this last meeting, so sure. let's see. Let's we can vote on it. Let's see. So uh, number three, approval of minutes from January eighth, two thousand fifteen. Has everybody had a chance to look those over? Yes. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, motion and a second. Not a problem. All right. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes from January 8th, 2015, say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. <coughs> okay, discussion of design guidelines. Uh, any information from? Well, uh, if you staff. remember, uh, in the January meeting we talked, we, we uh, kind of been discussing as a group uh, the need to kind of review the design guidelines and uh, talk about anything that we would want. Uh, you don't have an action item on tonight's agenda, so uh, but you can kind of recommend to staff uh, kind of what you'd like to see and enhancing it. I can even talk, uh, I can even have the chairman of the Historic Preservation Commission, uh, who's with us here tonight, <laughs> acting as chairman of the Planning Commission, uh, talk about uh, enhancing uh, the historic preservation uh, during the February meeting. Uh, asked if we could uh, have the Planning Commission consider uh, strengthening uh, development standards throughout this entire town, not just the historic town site. Uh, and so I'm just going to kind of open it up to you. Um, obviously, Commissioner Coffin, uh, I didn't get a chance to get him the binder of the, the last meeting that he was here, and so he's uh, kind of learning as we go throughout this meeting, but uh, it's only four pages, so if anything has been kind of sticking out to uh, to anyone, I'd love to um, have staff take a look at whatever we can do to rec or to strengthen these or uh, any any guidance you want to provide. I'm pretty familiar with this since I was okay. Okay. on Perfect. that committee for commission for That's ten what years I was too. Yeah. Um, that like that. And at one time, Sue Durkee and I developed some uh, a proposal for landscape requirements for commercial properties. Okay. Um, I'd like to bring that back up and look at it because reading this, it's extremely vague. And we um, researched multiple cities' existing ordinances and compared to Edmonds, Oklahoma City's, Stillwater's. They're a little bit more beefy than ours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and much more specific. Mm -hmm. uh, this has more specifics about residential landscaping than it does about commercial, mm -hmm. which is really odd because usually commercial is much more detailed because they're much bigger buildings and much more public than residential. So I'd like you to pull that back out and look at it, see if we need to tweak it. Do you remember a time frame around that? It's been 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> um, but I don't think, since I work with that every day in the city in Edmond, it, I don't think there's a change much. Okay. Uh, but that's something that I think should be addressed since it's a beautification and we've had issues on division mm -hmm. in that respect. Yeah, I agree. So, I completely yeah. agree with you. I uh, think staff would totally support yeah. that. That would train the, the commercial side of it, right? Yes. Yeah. I think the, the, the main thing that, that we came up with, or our problems, Cody, as I recall, is several of us had called. We seem to have had a little outburst of these, uh, of these very simple, uh, quickly made, quickly installed uh, uh, car covers that mm -hmm. are blossoming. Mm -hmm. And so we're really, really more to the resident, residential side. And why these have not been uh, governed a little bit better, permit-wise or whatever, <clears throat> because uh, this has been the uh, the problem. I think the major reason that this came up, as I recall, was it not there, Mr. Wood? Uh, uh, we, we we suddenly heard of some of all that yes. down yeah. that uh, that just did not fit the uh, decor of the neighborhood. It didn't look like the didn't blend in with the home. Uh, and it looks to me like our residential neighborhood. We either need to toughen those up so that uh, that uh, the wishes of I think our constituents are, are followed there. Mm -hmm. And apparently, what we have here, I guess, is is not strong enough. Do you have any thoughts staff-wise 
on what we need to do to make sure that these little just little block covers don't pop up. They were supposed to, if they're going to have them, they would either be at the side of the house mm -hmm. or the back of the home. And what's happening, and we are seeing them now starting to pop up at the front, and it, it is definitely detrimental to the to the neighborhood look. And that's what what, what the, to the charm and stuff had. So what do we need to do to toughen those up in your thought there? Some of it is, can I jump in real quick? It seems like some of that's up to interpretation here, because it's a little, I would interpret it one way, but somebody else may be thinking something different, but under the roofs, no corrugated metal roofs are permitted. I would think that that's what most of those are made out of, isn't it? The ones I've well, seen, they're, they're either metal or vinyl or some sort of, or in that standing think, seam or something. Right, but to me, that's covered under number four, where it says no shake or corrugated metal roofs are permitted. So that's one thing that's a problem on the conflicts with the existing ordinance, which would seem very simple. But the other one, it's this home additions. I mean, the new design must be the same roof line, same plane, mm -hmm. similar style, sizing, architectural features. So you can't tell me an aluminum that's addition on the front is the same as a siding or brick house. Exactly. It, um, and the roof line is completely different because they're all angled versus gabled. And so it's in conflict with number nine as well. And of number 11, outbuildings, because if you can consider it, it's... It. Now, right. one thing I want to go here, these, as I understand, this is not an ordinance. This is just design standards. These are just, mm. we're suggesting you do this. Okay. Now, I, and I feel, though, that this needs to become, with, again, more teeth, and turn the building design standards for both commercial and residential into an actual ordinance. Something that we can adopt. That I completely agree, and that's course. kind of where I was heading. Is I mean, um, what you said about interpretation. You're exactly right. You've, I mean, you've nailed it because what the interpretation led to the problems was okay. Number eleven. My building inspector says an outbuilding. Yeah. He says that he inspects buildings, and buildings are defined according to the IBC code as something with four walls and you know right. doors and everything like that. He said these aren't buildings. I don't have jurisdiction for walls. And so here's what I want to do is talk about, you know, take take the ideas from tonight and in future planning commission meetings we talk about uh, adopting these in by a resolution to where uh, to I'm, I'm laughing earlier because Ed and I talked about, you know, uh, I, I'm trying to have uh, I like to always have uh, solutions to problems, uh, not just Talk about problems. I want to. I want to have something. So talk about um, maybe putting in here that's adopted by the resolution uh, that accessory buildings uh, don't go up without planning commission approval or a, a recommendation approved by council from the planning commission. So you guys see them first. I don't mean to be bureaucratic and slow the process down, but I do want to give uh, the neighborhood an opportunity to voice their opinion and I want uh, I mean we, we operate by you know a community and so I want the community to be to be involved in, in everything that we do as best they can uh, Sue Ducharme told me uh, everyone knows Sue uh, they're the the last few have gone up that have just really kind of uh, said a little bit uncomfortable with them because the neighbors felt like it happened overnight and they didn't they weren't no, you know kind of equipped with enough notification mm -hmm. and and the problem with me hearing that was we notified we did exactly what we were supposed to um, and you know what it just might have happened in a weird awkward time frame for people to where they couldn't they either couldn't make it or you know didn't receive the letter and you know might have been on a vacation whatever um, but I, I think that the resolution adopted uh, by city council saying that the planning commission needs to rec make recommendation uh, for accessory buildings and those kinds of things, I think that that would give it a lot of strength and, I, and that this entire uh, building design standard would be adopted uh, by council as well. I think we may want to go even more broad and just say any structure. So okay. it's an outbuilding, in, carport, including, carport in, in including an addition mm -hmm. to a house. So if there's any structure proposed for a lot or addition, that it needs to go through this process. That's that right. way, it, it's not led up to staff or whoever, mm -hmm. and then they don't get in trouble. It's we can look at it. If we get so many of them, we're inundated. Then maybe we need to make some ground rules. Clarify with the even Could nine we, even kind of says well, that is home additions. New work must be compatible with mass, massing, sizing, scale, and architectural features. So, 
these carports are an addition. Right. They're not. Are not permits these. required for these? For sure. No S answer but are permits. There seems to be some, some confusion there, too. Permits have been issued. Well, well that, that isn't quite clarified. Are <laughs> permits required? Are, are po folks supposed to be getting a yes. permit before one of these shows up? Oh, I just saw one pop up, and I can tell you money marbles and chalk, there wasn't a permit issue. But so what's the permit asked for, I'll put it that the, way. Uh, the issue with the permit is that's a that's a one-on-one -on -one process. That is uh, the community development office dealing with the applicant um, and those neighbors in that neighborhood wouldn't have the opportunity to hear what's going on. Uh, when it comes before planning commission, it, you know, it's on two different public agendas because uh, a reminder, um, you know, you make you make recommendations to city council. Uh, we, we can't really do any specific variances or anything like that through this board, but you make the recommendations to council. So that's two public meetings that the community is invited to. And that, that sets a lot better in my opinion as far as um, Having a unified understanding of what's going on and having um, having a neighborhood uh, feel like a community. Well, I think these these folks should know that this commission goes when they come in for one of these permits for a carport. We need to see a footprint. Mm -hmm. We need to see their house roughly stretched, or right. I should put I put mm -hmm. over there to permit. Here's their home, mm -hmm. so that you can see that it is on the side or behind, mm -hmm. at least meeting some of the criteria that we yeah, have. Yeah. We need a scale and drawing. Certainly mm -hmm. not and in the front. Yeah. Our dream. Not in the front. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it doesn't have to necessarily be the engineered no. elevations, but I mean, you can take a Google image, right. you know, shrink the image, and then just draw right next to it where it's going right. to be. Or, or a brochure, or, anything. or mm -hmm. right. the person can, building it has to have them. some information. Exactly. So if they, exactly. if they have enough information to build, to build it, that should be enough for us to figure out what it's going to look like. And my, and my point with uh, saying that, because I completely agree with you, uh, is, is just the fact that it might be slowing down the process, but we are still trying to help help the process help along the as much as well. And protect the other neighbors so that they're aware of what's going on and the property values. Well, there's and a reason the for look. slowing down the process so they just don't pop up like mushrooms mm -hmm. and the right. people next door are going like, what just happened? And I right. there it is. So right. there it is. I know that on commercial buildings when they do these things and they get a permit, they have mm -hmm. to put it in their window, basically. Mm -hmm. It used to be that way. It's supposed to. You're supposed, supposed to. Display it somewhere on the property that's visible from the mm -hmm. street, so someone can tell they're doing work in here. Mm -hmm. This is when they got—they do have their permits. It's all legitimate, right? That sort of thing. I'm wondering if we want to do the same thing with residential. Give them a little yard sign to stick out there, you know, so that the neighbors can kind of have a heads up because not everybody watches the show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can you that way, that? And they have, yeah, and then they have to put the. And it could just be a cheap, you know, one of those, almost like yeah. a political sign that they stick in their yard that. I think that's part of their fees idea. cover it, We're but then if you're driving down the street and you notice one in your neighbor's yard next door and it has to stay there for X amount of days, then that'll be your heads up to ask or look into, there's something that's going to happen here. Yeah, it it may in. be in the backyard, it may be in addition, it may be something. In a lot of places but, they just take them to the front door that's right. or, the, or a but, yard, depending on what is available. But I don't think you'd available. see that because no. houses, so many of the doors don't face the street that's true. and the windows, it, it can well, it fall out. facing the street, something. That, right. Because it should be so many feet from the street or the sidewalk or someplace where it's visible in the front yard mm -hmm. that's not a, like a real estate sign, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And that way the neighbors have a heads up and it says on the sign what it is. Right. You know, this person has applied for. And you'll see all over. Uh, something Edmond right now you'll see our city attorney's name plastered all over everything with uh, different rezonings that he's helping right. an applicant on and so right. uh, I, I really like that idea I, I don't it shouldn't know. cost the city much to do signs and they can bring them back and put a deposit right. down or whatever want to do, do it you, but do you know that do you know if you've seen any other cities doing that mm -hmm. I, but yes. I really I have you have yes okay really? and Texas? they are well not no, well Texas and Illinois Okay. Um, they, if you do not have, and they're very vigilant. They, uh, if you do not have a, a, a permit, and it's in a sack, just like for building a brand new house, mm -hmm. it is taped to the front door or to the front window. If it's not there, you will be getting a knock on the door from the, or if they see a, say, a roll-off mm -hmm. uh, trash bin, or if they see uh, materials set right. in the front mm -hmm. door yard without uh, anything. There will be somebody knocking on the door from the code enforcement, and uh, it's and then then you will get inspected, and it, they inspect everything. One other little item that relates to these: and a lot of them we see they're popping up in the front yard. I mean, right in the front, 
over the existing driveway. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we also have something in our codes that uh, if you're going to be parking your vehicle on your property, other than your driveway, it has to have hard surface. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, there may be in the necessity to mention in here where these are these type of structures are are by the side of the home. And, and again, hopefully we're addressing also the view of them, not just the typical one. Mm -hmm. There's some decent ones around. There's some mm -hmm. flat roof ones and some with a, a little bit of a, you know a, an arch design so they, they fit a little bit better than what you see. Uh, we probably need to make sure that we address the fact if there's a necessity for a hard surface under their concrete asphalt or the like, mm -hmm. that needs to be part of it also right, as, mm -hmm. we, as we bring these up mm -hmm. to date these things. That was obviously a big deal during our uh, last major concert was parking on you know solid surfaces because mm -hmm. every everyone over by the Codwin Flats wanted to charge for parking in their yard and everything like that. So. Uh, I want to go back a little bit. I, I heard something I'm interested in. Um, Mr. Coffin talked about um, every any structure that's built. So um, just looking down the pipeline, I can tell you we're looking at uh, kind of a, a larger scale uh, mixed use development uh, coming to Guthrie. Um, would you be okay with seeing you know different elevations from the builders or something in there? Um, uh, their um, packet that their shows, and restrictions. right, their covenants mm -hmm. that shows uh, that, you know, they're not allowing carports. Is that something that you're interested in or? Definitely. Okay. Yes, I think it would be, be something great. that would be great to have come before the, the commissions and boards. Because, you know, we're, we're obviously not going to put it, put together a, uh, you know, an agenda with uh, 300 uh, lots with developments on them, but if right. if you guys saw the elevations and saw the covenants that showed that they're not going to allow that, um, would that would that satisfy everyone? It sounds like. Yeah, I think that'd be a good start. You know, at least because homeowners and they, then they would have to come in before the city or the board if they wanted to change those covenants right. mm -hmm. or restrictions that they would put on it. Um, is as far as custom houses, or are these like plan? Plan houses that you're going to gonna pick your your model and put pick it on this model. lot, sort of thing. You're going to you're going to see yeah. a lot of that. But uh, when I say mixed use, you really are going to see you're going to see multifamily. You're going to see um, a little bit of office space incorporated into the um, into the PUD, and uh, uh, the majority of it, I, I'd say almost uh, eighty percent of it, is going to be your typical R1 single family home. But okay. just for Full disclosure, I always leave all the cards out on the table. That's kind of what you'll see with that development. Um, possibly even some very exciting uh, new uh, commercial space thrown in um, thrown in on that as well, if they can get the um, school land commission to partner in. So. Okay. Does that include like street layout, sidewalks, ADA compliance, all that kind of stuff? So is that something we would look at at the same time that we see that? Yes. That we do. That that street lighting? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We've done that before for the communities on the west side, um, off of Academy and different things. They'll, they bring us the, it's several different things, but they bring us the top plat and then, they see, then the developer, we see how it's going to be developed, the sewer, sewage systems, where they get laid, the, the sanitary and both uh, All the easements rainwater and easements. Underground electrical, yeah. I hope. Uh, one other question, going back to other engineers. I, again, I, I think what I'm, we're seeing is that some of these going back to these carport things are going up like overnight. We just heard, heard somebody mention suddenly the neighbors look out and this is done. Because those are, I'm sure those are installed in a matter of three or four hours mm -hmm. by an experienced crew. How do we how do we make sure that these these builders of these uh, are made aware of the fact that don't install one of those in Guthrie without making sure that your client runs through the uh, the permit process or at least drops into uh, is, there a, huh? uh, is there a way to let these uh, manufacturers, these installers know, uh, don't be coming in telling your, 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 your potential buyer there, we can do this, but have this done uh, in order today, we'll put it up tomorrow. Uh, you know, I, I think... I, we know how I like can jump in here. So I, I really don't feel that... Um, I mean, it would be nice if the builders had some knowledge of that, but it's really not up to the builder to be aware of such things. The people call them, or the person, or the, the GC, the general contractor, whoever that may be, 
whether it's a homeowner or say you, a, a hired contractor. Now those need to be aware of the city guidelines and rules and that's why you have to be licensed by the city for to do different things, right. and that's what, and they know the well, rules. We don't have that. You don't have that situation here. The We're GC, not right now. I'm saying the GC in right. most of these the cases is the homeowner. Home home and if they throw it up, then they get well, fined, or they have right. they get fined, and the thing that, has to come down. You know, and that's the big is, thing. You have to make the fines enough. There have, to have to be some teeth behind it. Otherwise, yeah. they're just going to go. Oh well, I'm paying this fine, and I got what I wanted. Yeah, it's a slap yeah, in the hand. Why bother if it? Or theoretically, you tear it one down. Or you have that yeah. move it or take it out. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. You almost need to put it uh, like a tobacco pool. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that's what they're trying to prevent. Right. A hell damage or, you know, when any kind of weather damage. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you yeah, almost yeah, have to They're doing this to protect their vehicle. Sure. I have a question about that. Right. You can't blame them. But they need to know. But the average homeowner, not like the GC where they got to have that permit. I mean, they got to yeah. have their city license or anything. So they just see another one in town and. Right. I get a hold of ABC, a little carport place, and might put me one in. I I know that if uh, Mr. Chapel uh, was joining us tonight, he could tell you exactly where you can find a pop-up tent because he sent me the photo yes. a few different times to remind me of what's happened uh, in the past few months. So, do we need to further address if we're going to clarify these what the looks and stuff need to be like? Because if that's the case, maybe we need to get around and take some pictures of some that. Well, we reluctantly go along with that. That could probably be the minimal that we might say that matches the home enough or probably won't upset the neighborhood versus no, this is not what we don't. Well, the, the problem with that is there's such a broad variety of architectural styles uh -huh. here mm -hmm. that I don't think you can say, yes, this fits that house or this fits that house or it doesn't right. fit that house. That's the well, problem. The architectural style, I, the main thing I've seen is you just, just a little, a little right. canopy pop up like that. Right. Like, but I think that's what sure. that comes to more, what's more important is maybe we should make more of a rule that it shouldn't be visible from the front yard. Mm -hmm. If they put and that in the backyard, it doesn't affect that many people, especially if they have a privacy fence. You or know something. our problem there, and we've already heard it, is that some people can't get to their backyard. They can, yeah, they don't have out front drive, sure. and that's it. And that's why I think on the side to it, drive yeah. by. No. Well, that's why we've had it broad enough that it can be as long as behind the face, the, the you know the front elevation mm -hmm. of the face can be at the side of the home. Right. And those are the ones that really start affecting yeah. the need to address what they look like or more important right. than so much in the back. Even with the location. Um, maybe not being able to be something that we can address right away. I still don't think that you would need to put in the designs uh, into the resolution because at the end of the day, they're still coming to you for your approval or your recommendation. And so you can tell them right then, uh, you know, hey, if you can agree to do this or, you know, we don't want to see this style, but we can, you know, maybe every time that we have them applied, we do have a list of things that you've, you know, kind of giving the staff a head nod on. Yeah. Do's and don'ts, and this right. is what you'll... Uh, even if we can provide that to them either beforehand or uh, during the meeting, that might be able to solve, you know, without, without forcing you guys into something, because words in an adopted resolution, you know, are, are something that you have to act on, and so I, I, I don't want to limit ourselves too much. I want you guys to have the flexibility uh, that that's needed to perform the customer service. That, well, that some of them may some of them may complement the house. It kind of it kind of depends a little bit on what their home looks like too. Because right. yeah. some units may complement their house better than a different one. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so sure. Maybe if they bring them in for at least for us to look at, we need to see a picture of their home and then what they're intending to put there. So that it, does this fit? Does this actually complement your home mm -hmm. and the neighborhood, or does it clash terribly and just right. so far out of out of and gives, it also gives the commission and uh, code enforcement also teeth because if what goes up isn't what was brought before the board, right. I mean it could be a, it could be a, a, a gabled cut roof that matches the house really nicely, or right. and then when it's all said and done, they put up one of these pop-up metal buildings, but yep. it uh, and it's like no 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 that wasn't what was. So, so, what was so we're not recreating the wheel because I'm sure this has happened in other cities. Yes, uh, it, it is happening <laughs> in other cities. So I guess my question is uh, instead of us going through the same things that these other cities have done to try to solve this problem, we're going to we've done research to find out what other cities are saying, especially historic cities. That's really where we have an issue mm -hmm. is we're trying to continue the overall look of the city and make it contiguous with the way it's always been rather we've seen, than. We've seen a lot of it come 
kind of what you're talking about with the historic cities in the in the Tulsa metro. Okay. Um, it hasn't really been done in the Oklahoma City metro in historic communities because theirs is already so strict, so tight. Yes. So, uh, but in your Claire Morris and your Bartlesville, you've seen uh, things like that. We've gotten some uh, information on those already, so we're a little bit ahead of, ahead of the pace. I wasn't trying to tell you guys what to do tonight, but I am, you know, kind of hearing that you guys want to move forward with this, and mm -hmm. so uh, you'll have that whenever we look to yeah. we see uh, make yeah, we see what some of the others are doing to kind of compare what they've done yes. versus what we're talking about. Like I said, I think, yeah, I think, I think that would be a great idea. That the way two we that can... really do come to mind are Bartlesville and Claremore, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly. That way we're they, not inventing the, reinventing awesome. the wheel. Either. Right, but they might have some ideas that didn't occur to us. Yes. So it's we kind of nice that with to the sign, and it really helped us out. We borrowed ideas from the other cities with our signs. And that's what we did with the landscape one, too. So it makes sense to learn from other people mm -hmm. going through this process. Absolutely. It's safe stuff. So your landscape yes. comment Drew, was more toward the commercial side of it. It was. It was all commercial. Right. Okay. And moving, and if we can, I'd like to talk a little bit about commercial. As far as residential, because we are quite an eclectic neighborhood, you know, city of different architectural styles, uh, all the way from Victorian to, gosh, brand new ranch style homes. The, the, it's kind of nice to have the guidelines and just give some people some ideas of this is what you need to do to match what you have. But I think on on the commercial side of it, we could tighten that up and actually turn some of these commercial building standards into, say, a more tightly regulated ordinance of how the buildings are designed to complement or a lot like what IBC with. did, so uh, they, they did the arched openings, they, they worked with the architecture to help match with the, the Victorian Just, downtown architecture. Right. And it depends we, on where it is. I think yes. it's, if it's in the historic district or along a main street, it makes sense to really try to be consistent. But yes. if it's in other areas, I think we can give them flexibility to do a completely different style. It could be modern, it could be whatever, because we don't want to create fake history. I mean, that's, well, that's the whole But idea. that's the thing. We're not, we're not mimicking the old buildings, right. but we're just like Edmund. Everything is brick. Yes. They will not put, let anything else yeah. but brick buildings go up, which right. is something that, you know, yeah. down certain areas, that's yeah. like that's what you're saying. There's things that, I'd yeah. rather see more variety and yeah. let people be creative and use stone, glass, metal, whatever they want to do, more like we're seeing on 16th Street and 23rd Street, mm -hmm. you know, because that's more interesting and it's... It it get way out. Well, mm -hmm. Right, but again, if it works for them and it's, you're not mangling a historic building, you're building something new. Exactly. So it's, I think it's very different than in a residential. As long as the scale and proportion and setbacks and all of that are consistent with everything else, I think we should give more flexibility on the commercial side mm -hmm. to do what they want to do, as long as it's not in the historic district. I think that's different. Mm -hmm. so. I agree. And, and I think that you uh, one uh, kind of good example about uh, flexibility kind of working maybe not the materials that were used but the new um, uh, spoonful pharmacy and Hallmark building uh, that's a you know that was kind of a Renee Spinetto uh, type of influence because the parkings in the back you don't see the parking for them and so we've we've shown some you know hey let's think about doing this kind of thing like I said it's not necessarily the materials but I think that we are kind of equating the same things here and there so um, and I think that's a great idea, that it sets a precedent that's much nicer to look at from the street mm -hmm. than it is to see the sea of cars and asphalt and parking lots in the front, which you see in most cities. It's, it's nice to see something. So you'll have these ready here in a week? No. <laughs> <laughs> have I ever made a promise to you no. like that? <laughs> Perhaps in a serious vein. When, when might we have something that, no, would you be giving us a little package that we could see what they're doing, say in Bartlesville or something, so we can we maybe borrow a few ideas? Yeah, that's what's great. Even just a synopsis, I, I don't think we need to see all of their no. thing, but you could probably take each cities and kind of do, here's what here's how they approached it, mm -hmm. and make a synopsis of each one so we could kind of read through them and go, okay, I get that. Right. They took this approach, they took this approach, and if we want more detail, I think we could yeah. get into it. But I just think we need to get on it because I probably had a half a dozen phone calls, and I know you didn't. I don't know you had any, Joe. Nobody knows where I am. Let me catch you. Huh? I don't give you my phone number or my email. Okay. <laughs> That's what's great is uh, I can always get you guys that information. Um, I can send you guys whatever I need to. Yeah. Your your communication back and forth with each other is limited through Open Meetings Act, but I can send you guys whatever information. And if you have questions, you can give me a call um, and just say how to you know 
I, I interpret it this way, do you agree, blah, blah, blah. And we can do that feedback going forth, back and forth so that you're well prepared for that meeting. Which we comes. also need to make it easier for you folks that are at the planning commission. I mean, right at the permit counter. Mm -hmm. if somebody can no, this just would not, this would not right. fly. And mm -hmm. this here's kind of what it is. And right. it's clear and simple. And, right. uh, and then it's going to need to go before the commission and things like that. And it's, because it sounds like right now that as I'm talking to Jim over there and stuff, it's, it's a little difficult for them to. I, I think the, the hard part is just you guys, I mean, you guys are very empowered. I mean, you guys have the authority. Staff can't speak for you guys. And so we always want to walk a very fine line of trying to give information. I, I, uh, you saw it with the uh, Board of Adjustment meeting that came through uh, talking about the uh, latest billboard that wanted to come through and go on I-35 and Seward Road. So we, we were able to kind of give them a little bit of guidance on what they might want to focus on and uh, even even talk about, you know, talk about how they're going to be uh, different. Uh, but we're, we're never going to say, hey, with this you'll get passed. We'll, well, we'll, we'll but, always hesitate on But, and I think this will happen over time with the history of us looking at these carports or whatever mm -hmm. the issue is, much like the historic district. I've applied for many applications for doing all kinds of things to downtown buildings. Mm -hmm. yeah, and when I went in for an app, for a application to fill it in, I would talk to Renee or whoever was there. Mm -hmm. And they did say, you know, these things have passed in the past mm -hmm. through the commission very easily. Mm -hmm. These things have been issues of contention. So you might reconsider this or think about changing it around or, or this is going to be a, a really serious discussion. Mm -hmm. so, you, so at least whoever applies for it is aware of the history and they're not trying to recreate the wheel and they're not going to come in and get bonked over the head. Right. You, you know, don't mind me telling people to bring boxing gloves with them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. yeah. I'm not sure that's going to happen, but, it, it will. but but the nice thing, it's just, and that's something I'm using the HP as an example because Ed and I have both been on it and it's been going on for so long that, and it's fair for everyone because they know what to expect and mm -hmm. it's in everyone's best interest to keep everything consistent and I think this is really the same thing. I agree. We're just trying to expand on something that has worked for 20 some years. So there's no reason not to do the same thing, and it lets staff help guide people so they're not going down the wrong path right. and wasting their time and their money applying right. for something that there's no way it's going to work. Right, because they you simply can't let people exactly. do that. Well, I mean, we, we we definitely want to look at what what our, our folks in the community want mm -hmm. and know that you know that it'll that they don't have to go through a complete uh, unbelievable process to get right. a simple right. carport done, but they right. need to know at least what has been acceptable or what is now going to be acceptable. And there, because I can see them saying, well, that's been done. There's that right. Yeah, they, well, yeah, but that, that was before. That was right. the last release. I, I, and that's, I kind and of, that's why things have changed, that's because right. of that. So that's that's, right. I get a kind of a wry smile uh, thinking about, and there are those people um, that are just going to try their luck mm -hmm. and think that, you know, they right. can uh, ask forgiveness. Uh, smooth, yeah. smooth talk or ask forgiveness. Yeah. And, uh, well, you let me get over with this, and so yeah. can I can no I do more. this too? And I, it's it's Ed, Ed, Ed understands where I'm going. Uh, yeah. The one uh, thing you can you about how can we how can we address also if we're going to do this? And I don't know how there's somebody somebody bootlegs one in. We call that a bootlegger. I mean, it's an old contractor, and sometimes you just shoot things in. <laughs> how are we going to make sure that these folks understand whether it's after the fact or whatever? Whether they're through through a fine, mm -hmm. again you need to pay big brother there. Or, but they need to know that these just cannot be bootlegged in without some sort of consequences. How can this also be added as part of this going? Right. You said a very specific word that I, I think is kind of key, and that's consequence. Mm -hmm. um, because a slap on the wrist is going to empower more people to go ahead yes. and just do the exact same, same thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can talk to uh, Rate and Fee Advisory Committee, um, and I can tell you, I think if it's strong enough, you're not going to see that problem, uh, you know, kind of popping up all over the if place. If it costs more than the carport? <laughs> well, <laughs> obviously, of course, one thing is, got to come down. Right. That's what yeah. I thought. The better yeah, solution right. might be, that is there right. aren't fines, you need to remove it, because mm -hmm. that's not acceptable. And you right. know, that's, that's and something no... And if it's not no, removed within so no, many days, yeah. then there's a fine. Nobody would right. like and you still have to remove it. And the fine keeps repeating yeah. until it is gone. Yes. Within uh, every month Nobody or whatever. Nobody would like to have to remove We can always, it might not be something that we can expect cash about, but um, I can tell you our uh, police chief is uh, very strict on um, anything that is kind of due to us. 
going over to the county and filing those liens. I can tell you that he has been very adamant about uh, okay. about it in his short tenure here. Yeah. Okay. So. Productive. I think it's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even we definitely need to put a draw a line in the sand and be consistent. I agree. It's in everyone's yes. best interest yeah. to say yeah. very clear, this is what we expect. If you dip, differ from that at all, there's going to be consequences. Mm -hmm. and and I, 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 uh, I think yes, that was a good The nice thing about the Historic Preservation District is that because we do have a, actually there is an ordinance that this, and we, it is very specific. It's very specific. We have a red book that hand, is handed out to every building owner. Um, and it's time, and in fact, it's time for that to be revamped a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in essence, it is working, and people are really fairly good about knowing what they can and what they can't do. Or at least trying to find out. Or they do yes, something. and that, that's why. Well, because and it's easier that it's a commercial area because people come in wanting to use it as a commercial business. It's a little different if you're to work in a residential area. Um, it becomes because now you have neighbors and you're. You're, there's a lot of different personalities involved in, with, in the business community. We all know that's the whole reason Guthrie is why it is. It's why it's the destination is mainly because of the antiquity of the buildings and that's one of the major draws here. So people pretty well know and it makes it a little easier to uh, maintain that. And I mean every now and again somebody's going to come up with something that's a little out of the ordinary and or off the wall and mm -hmm. just like it's like no, we can't allow that, or you know, or sometimes it's sometimes you can make it work. You can exactly like an amphitheater house. Yeah, it's <laughs> not something you see downtown every day. No. <laughs> I think talking about the line in the sand, I think it's uh, I think it's an important time for us to really address this too, because uh, I'll, I'll tell you very similar to what I told the Historic Preservation Commission back in. Uh, January, there are things building up, and there's a there's a pipeline of activity that you're going to start seeing. You know, a lot of different stuff happening. And this this last uh, meeting was was a pretty substantial agenda with the Historic Preservation Commission. The the next one's going to be twice as long. I think for Planning Commission, uh, now's a good time because I think that there are on the on the near horizon there's going to be growing pains. But when we pass that horizon, and people are coming to Guthrie knowing what to expect of new development, not just the historic district. I think that uh, that's when we won't see these things popping up that we're having to, to fight near as much, but uh, people are just understanding of uh, what our expectations are. But I think right now there are a little bit of growing pains with uh, you know what we're, what we're going to be facing with these uh, next few uh, larger developments. So that's a good problem to have. It is a the big thing is we need to be ahead of it with these things, Absolutely. and right now I feel like we're behind. Yes. Okay. Because it hasn't been addressed at all for a very long time, and most cities, our size are slightly larger, already have those things in place, and it's easier to be consistent if they're there before the development starts. I guess I don't, I, I don't disagree with that. I don't, I don't love hearing it, uh, mm -hmm. that, that we're behind, um, but I, I also wouldn't disagree with it. The other thing I think would be good while we're talking about new developments, mm -hmm. anything the city can do to encourage infill houses. Yes. We have a lot of empty lots, a lot of derelict houses, a lot of just vacant lots mm -hmm. in big portions of the city. And I know it's not something unique to Guthrie by any means. It, most cities have that problem, not quite to our extent sometimes. Right. But I, I'd like to see some way that we could try to encourage people mm -hmm. to put infill houses, since there's already infrastructure, there's water, sewer, streets, street lights, sidewalks, all these things that the city's invested in mm -hmm. that are sitting there in some cases blocks and blocks of, of no one enjoying it. Uh, then you've got new addition, urban, urban sprawl that keeps happening and the issue right. with urban with rural water district that compounds that, which I don't even want to get into that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's true. It um, so, and I know other cities, especially in Texas, my brother lives in Houston and we've had conversations about how they deal with it and mm -hmm. they have definitely given some incentives to people to build custom houses in neighborhoods that have a lot of empty lots uh, or do infill houses where one burned or was torn down and try to push individuals or developers and make it serious incentives so that mm -hmm. it's in their best interest and more economically viable uh, to do that. I'll tell you some of the most recent infill projects. I don't know why, for what reason they, they happen to just kind of fall. But you know, boom, boom, boom. Four, four infill projects in a row uh, were kind of focused on the west side, um, and 
they are all shot down because of they don't want to deal with the uh, uh, floodway or flood zone flood zone problems uh, like or any kind of flooding from the city. Um, yeah, that's exactly what okay. it was. Um, uh, someone was interested in Banner School doing um, mm -hmm. infill housing on that lot and just kind of clearing it, uh, which of course that's a completely different issue, um, and they're just so so worried about flood. Isn't flood the bridge issues. scheduled to be? It is expanded, and isn't there? Aren't they going to elevate the roadway and do with a bunch of problem with plans? the with the problem the problem with the unknown in, in those developers' oh. minds? And so it's not that they've just been chased off from Guthrie. Uh, they they did go to the east side, but I just I thought that, that was interesting and something I'd, I'd like to share with you guys. Yeah. So they put the projects on hold on the west side until the bridge is in, basically. Right, and you've seen like. you have seen a lot of. Um, uh, TLC being done to the to some of the West Side projects by uh, probably some more Guthrie Guthrie based folks. Uh, the the four that I mentioned earlier, none of them had Guthrie ties, so uh, they automatically just look for a different location. Right. That, uh, that's something interesting that I thought I'd, I thought I'd share with you, but uh, I agree with you on infill housing. I uh, I'd be really interested to see what other other communities have done for incentivizing it because that would be a That'd be a fun project in my mind. Uh, I, you know, I kind of look for those those things that can make us different, and so I think that that would be a big step in the right direction. I agree. Another little item, just for maybe put it on the record, we talked a little bit about it, and I don't know how much this falls under planning, other than the fact that the original project did. Uh, been a few people, and of course, once you they find out that you're associate with the city then we'll come and talk to you and that's fine that's what we're here for uh, a lighting problem that has now come up since the the, uh, just the uh, project has been completed has to do with the new church right there mm -hmm. right next to Royal Water their parking lot lighting mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course just you don't know this until you put the lights up and actually focus them uh, I've been asked who can they go to some of those lights as you around the corner Mm -hmm. Going say southbound and you round the corner going down water. Um, excuse me, sooner. Those lights are very dangerous. Uh, they're extremely bright. Two or three of them are too high. How do we? Uh, is that fall under uh, our? Is that part of say uh, Jim's? You know, he does. He can't come out design, and check the lights. Obviously. You know, when, when you're doing the writing off the final on the project and thing. But uh, somebody needs to check those lights at night. Uh, you'd never see it during the day. And electricians are there; they're just setting them right. You right. just understand that. Uh, how does that? Uh, that's become a problem a couple of other spots. I it is obviously too. design. Um, it's just it, a it matter of. It just needs to be adjusted. How does uh, that happen? How making sure that the happen? right staff person approaches them. Who's that? Cause making sure that the right staff person approaches them. Uh, talking about what we can do because um, we we talked about this uh, in, a, in a, one of the last times I've ever seen you, and uh, we we tried taking care of it. We tried uh, going to look at them and. I don't know if anything's been done. It's a safety issue. There's and so if we're, if we're still having that same problem, then and of course, maybe you know, another... Jim Fish has only got so far you can, to go. It's, it's something that's got to be seen at night. Somebody's got to go out there at 7, 30, 8 at night. Well, not later now. So we've got daylight it. saving. But those lights, it, it was almost like the first time we had some problems with the with the new sign there at the Baptist Church. The, the digital sign was too bright later on. It was blinding when you came up sooner. And you just let them know and they... They tone it down, but these just need to be readjusted. Does that start with us? Does that start with, with, uh, with uh, planning? Who projects. do we let? Who do we let know this? In the future, with new construction, it would go through us, wouldn't it? Well, we'd look at lighting. I, I feel that, but it's still a light, and it depends on how it's aimed. I would not see it coming through us. It would be more a citizen sees or like you see a problem where it's dangerous going down the road. It is turned into say, well, Mr. Mosley or to Jim Fish and Code Enforcement say, it's you know, because of the it's a, it would be a deal. it would be a nuisance type of thing. So that would be go in front of you know um, Code Enforcement at that point, being uh, if it's perceived perceived as a nuisance, and then he would take it and go to the building owners or or the people that. Yeah, See, the only reason I bring it up to you, Cody, is it because I'm sure, you know, we went through the whole permit, they went through the whole permit, and Jim, our Hanky is down there, he's checking things off. Mm -hmm. And this is really a final completion, all right, we've signed the project off, it's great, the folks right. love it, and it's a nice, nice addition to our neighborhood. And suddenly, somebody realizes that 
a little further adjustments not necessary because it's that's, greater. That's where I probably and I didn't say, know whether it needs to go through through you know the permit your permit office or what. I think uh, we'll always take any customer complaints, uh, whether they go to our office or not, because we'll make sure that they uh, go to the right office uh, when, when that customer leaves. Um, like I did, uh, we, we checked on this before. Um, if, it, if it's not something uh, that they take very serious, um, we'll continue to increase our presence addressing the issue until it's it's taken care of. It's as simple as getting hold of their job electrician and saying, hey, those lights need a little further adjustment. And the job's done and, and, and a nice addition to the whole community. Right. Okay. About lighting, a lot of cities, speaking of that, uh, Austin, Texas, I believe, has a good job about light pollution because it's a yes. big deal on light bouncing back to the sky and creating constant problems. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't be bad to... It's called dark sky compliant. I am a very big actor. <laughs> uh, it, it is, yeah, we uh, want to be... Pollution. And I was really... Yes, it is light pollution. It is a major problem. Mm -hmm. It is... I am a advocate for It'd be nice if we could get an ordinance that basically covers that, that yes. encourages or, or requires cool. new businesses and parking lots to abide by that because and there are light fixtures that are dark sky compliant. Yes. They're checked off for it that. It the light to thing, yes. the ground, not to the sky, and you don't have a lot of these issues. But we'd be ahead of the game if we went ahead and put that in an ordinance and just required them to put that type uh, fixture in. Okay. And LEDs, of course, are the way things are going. Okay. Add that to the bottom part of your plate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a commercial. I really yeah. think that's something that we could check yeah. off. In our list of things that we look I at, I tried to get that done with the new lights going down Oklahoma, but since OG&E put them in, they were not interested because they put them in, and so they just. And put you know them that very possibly would have so addressed this situation, yeah, very where, slow. The, where the parking lot lights were more directed for the parking lot, might right. have addressed this whole situation. That's what I'm saying. You wouldn't have to fix that problem if we said you can use these type of lights as long as they have these requirements with hood shields. Directionals, LEDs, that sort of thing. Yeah. We're working with a team right now on different uh, non-development issues, but you know their tagline is "Create Responsibly," um, and and kind of what I feel like can transition is develop responsibly. And when I when I say responsibly, I guess I mean with intention. You know, not just saying what's been done in every other cookie cutter town in Oklahoma, uh, but you know what is Guthrie doing to be responsible for future generations of development. Um, and putting us in a right, putting us in a right path, I guess, moving forward. Because um, you know our demographics aren't quite there to where people are just knocking down our door for a lot of things. Uh, but we also want to show that we are very intentional. And um, if if you're going to do that same thing in Austin, why wouldn't you expect it to do it in every great community across America? Well, and it is again it's what Mr. Coffin was saying is that. Um, we want to be ahead of the game. We want to have these these rules and regulations in place before we wished we. <laughs> Aaron can join us. Whatever that is. Yeah. It's it Just hold that. Getting the crickets. Yeah. And I, and I believe that's the develop. That's the same direction that the cities that I remember reading about and discussed with my brother. Um, it, they were using the carrot instead of the stick approach. If it's a abandoned house, mm -hmm. the taxes for that property were twice what they were for the house next door that was livable. And that way you're encouraging people to either fix it, occupy it, or tear it down, but it was the same thing, the taxes on the empty lot were higher than a house. Yeah. So they're either going to sell it to someone that will build on it, or then you get the required activity that you want, rather than encouraging people to let them become an abandoned house, mm -hmm. which is the way it is now because it, they basically have less taxes than the people that abide by the rules and are a good neighbor and keep their property up. So you're penalizing the ones that are doing the right thing and you're yes. giving benefits to the ones that are messing up your process. I've heard Washington, D.C. does the same thing. An abandoned house, the taxes mm -hmm. go up exponentially. Yes, really? every year. Yes, mm -hmm. every year until it yes. is. And then once somebody takes it over, it drops back down to the yes. status quo. Whatever and that's how you get it to change. It's all yes. about the dollar. And if they can save money by not repairing something indefinitely, I brought that up hard. in the meetings before too. Well, and then you get it just, it is a generational thing at that point because, uh, you know, maybe the grandparents didn't take care of it and, you know, the grandkids fall, uh, you know, they get a phone call saying 30 years down the road, oh, you're the owner of this property that you've never seen before. And it's because they didn't have any incentive to move on it beforehand. And, 
We don't have to worry about abandoned right. property. If the taxes are fifteen dollars a year, they didn't care because they didn't notice. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> point. But get a little initiative going. And we used to have a little program here, and maybe you're still doing it. When Renee was here, she occasionally had a report on some of the homes that were the worst, and the city was taking yes. action mm -hmm. to actually mm -hmm. remove them. I haven't seen that happening for a little while. Are, are we still? We're still doing. We're still it. moving on that. Very adamant about it. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you if you've seen the latest. Um, dilapidated uh, topic we're uh, kind of battling right now with one major dilapidated structure to sure. but removing it would be uh, over the entire annual budget. I saw that. that list of dilapidated structures uh, has exceeded 105. Yeah. And that's what I guess it, it, it's exceeded it, 100. And that, and that proves my point. I think if we're not aggressive problems. in our solution it's only mm -hmm. going to get worse because what we've been doing so far. Absolutely. Hasn't yeah, done anything. Done. You've seen that in just a very short time since that list has been done. It's every single year it's grown, right? And and that's hard because you want to put in an action plan, right? Uh, that's that's hard to swallow that that, that number would grow. But, but in some ways, it's more income for the city and it's turning things around. Is what we're talking There's about. There's going to be a lot of um, back pressure on that, I'm sure. Well, but I mean, but it'll have to come about because right. you're right. Because if it doesn't. It's just going the it's blight. Going to snowball. It, it, the blight will and, keep and we're not growing. talking about picking on the elderly or Absolutely. the poor. We're, yeah. I mean, most of those people. There are there are plenty of places and plenty of volunteers and have that for humanity. And the lady that came to the last meeting that I thought was wonderful. That's done all the improvements and helping the community and fixing people's houses. Make where you can. a beautiful. Thing. Exactly. And, uh, we and, 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 yes. Right. There's all kinds of things to help those people. I'm talking about absentee landlords. Absolutely. I'm talking about people that have slumlord properties that just don't keep them up. I um, mean, they don't care because they don't live here. Um, that's the kind of thing that hurts the city, and it hurts our image, and it hurts the neighborhoods, and hurts they're growth. hazards. It hurts right? growth. Exactly. I've got one that was um, a perfect opportunity for um, a, well, I'd say a, a mid to major employer in town. They were going to have uh, 45 people that they were looking in downtown specifically, and the, uh, the owner has yeah, I'm just junk in there and not really anything else. It's probably not who everyone's thinking about, but uh, it's it's a different one. But uh, they just then know we want to we want to leave it, and that's a that's a terrible problem because I just told this uh, you know this company that was bringing in 35 to 45 jobs. Sorry, we we actually don't have anywhere for you now. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough. So yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about houses that are for sale and they're empty because they're for sale. You know, I'm talking about properties that are not habitable, mm -hmm. and no one's trying to lease it, sell it, or you know, they it. don't. They don't have a roof. In, They're not making yes. any attempt. There's no. trees growing out of it. The right. cats are <laughs> running in and out of the roof. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. There's several of those around. Right. That's right. Yeah. Twice a week, we get around to the wife and I with with our food delivery with the with our, our program, and we have an awful lot of homes that are just what you're saying. Mm -hmm. They're not inhabited. They're, yeah. There's no for sale sign. They're just they're falling in and. Yeah. It's you know it, it, it kind of hits you, darn it. We we would rather have a rather nicer view of our city than some of these. And they always not have not been addressed in many years. Yeah. And, and the current process on that, how does that go? If the city maintains or mows the property, the city's expenses build up to a point, and that gets turned over and assessed to taxes, and then if the taxes get to a certain point, then does the city take the property, or how? What's how I don't does that work? I don't know that there's any step to where the city actually takes the property. Okay. Um, but I'm also not 100% certain on this on this field, just because uh, during the transition, uh, code enforcement left uh, the transition to where I, you know, went down to Renee's old office and Renee retired. Code enforcement did actually uh, relocate to the police department, and so uh, that has has I've never really had a managerial por portion of that, um, so I can't really say specifically what our process is. I just know that. Okay. Chief Swayer has done a phenomenal job in addressing and making sure that all of those liens were getting filed. And, and you mentioned our budget. Do we get our money back? Uh, it, somehow, uh, if we tear that down, right. do do we do we have a way to re recoup our, our costs that we did? Uh, we certainly should have. Right. That's my well, point behind this. I think just because you make this rule, okay, so we have liens filed out the wazoo at the county. Right. What good does that do? Because these people aren't going to pay that any more than they weren't going to pay the taxes before. Right. So, so it does, it's only going to get it back when it sells because it's the, whatever the And some of them will never, some of never sell. Never. Right. So what I'm saying, I think that other cities have dealt with this by just changing the rules to expedite that whole process and say, 
if you don't pay the taxes and you don't pay the liens up to current within a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. it goes to auction or whatever, and the proceeds go to pay the fines, and then it goes to someone that promises to build on it within a certain amount of time. Right. I, uh, I would, I'd be curious to investigate what our final process or what our final step in that process is. I can, I can maybe try and uh, do a report for you next week. That would be great. Yeah. Because I think that's something we need to have the full history of how that process would go from beginning to end and figure out a way to expedite it to really get that situation turned around. Yeah, I, like you say, Commissioner Ed, I can see some blowback here. There's going to be people, mm -hmm. these are elderly folks. You know, well, it still also, needs to be addressed. And definitely. it does need to be addressed. There are some things I can see where some of the blowback is, is that it looks like the, the city or the state or whatever is coming in and trying to take my property from me. Uh, I mean, it's going to be, there's just different things. Obviously, if it's a dilapidated structure where it's it, it's falling down, it's like, well, this is why. And it's right. empty. There's nobody in it. Right. That even becomes a safety and that's issue a, to take. Right. It's, it's a health and safety issue. issue. And, and a safety. fire hazard and all these other issues. There's a lot that's of things I'm never, never, and I think I'm never afraid to use my media relations to yes. explain that story. Yes. I don't think right. that's a hard story to well, say. Well, it also shouldn't tell. cause a hardship on the city to have no. all these legal expenses and managerial expenses and fines and fees and all of that that they never get paid back for right. because okay. these people refuse to pay so the we don't get paid back and we don't get to progress and that's so that's, right. a, that's not a hard story to sell to yeah. anyone no, no, because yes it's it's always easy to say that big brothers in their in their business but uh, people are also interested in the in the full story if you live next to that house is what you should say you're then. you're yes. cheering how would you on. feel if Come this on. was on both sides of your house look at this and this Come on. with the cats and the Come rats on, and the fish. vagrants and the spray paint and right. i mean it's well, not going to help your property pictures values. are taken and this is where it's plastered Absolutely. over the media and says right. this is what we're dealing with this is what right. we're doing so. right. yeah we're not talking about grandma's paint peeling on her house no and we're going to no. kick her out yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's the way some people may and perceive they will, that and they won't perceive it though. but that's not what we're talking about i know that's i agree it's just I complimented the lady on Elmwood today. I do it every time I see her out there. You have the best looking house. You keep it up. And unfortunately, the homes on either side are just, they've got to be distressing to her. Well, and bless her heart. She keeps a stiff upper lip and makes her place look great. Yeah. Well, that, on that note, do we need to, have we discussed this now fully yeah. for tonight, I think? <laughs> and uh, I think so. if we've said everything, anybody else that we want to talk about in this thing? If not, we could uh, go on to see. Mr. Mosley, do you have any comments? Oh, I've talked way too much tonight. Uh, thank you guys for your understanding. I'm, I wasn't real sure where this conversation was going to go, to be real honest with you, because it's it been a few weeks since we've met, and uh, it was kind of a broad agenda item, but I, I'm very encouraged in where we're heading. So thank you guys very much again for uh, always volunteering your time, and that means you know the world of difference to this community, um, and I, I hope that uh, we're getting to a point where you can see that difference that uh, these volunteer hours are making. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for bringing that to us, and thank you for bringing the um, the design standards in so we could go over them. I think again to make just some points. I think we've touched some really good good issues here too. Maybe making some of these a little stronger actually turn them into a uh, actionable ordinance. Mm -hmm. Um, that we can and do have some teeth in other than just suggestions which obviously are causing some issues and some some heartburn over different areas so any other comments or board comments uh, mr Mosley, uh, again and i know you have a lot on your plate would you have any ideas whatsoever when we can maybe be are we a month or two out where we can kind of address these how much how much I, would I say, think this is something we just want to stay at and just keep it like a bulldog yeah. keep our teeth in it I would say I'm going to yeah. try and go over this with a fine tooth comb by April but don't okay. be surprised if it's not on the April agenda and okay. it waits till May okay. uh, just because I know like I said that April agenda might be you know a, a good conversation as well so um, very well okay. well thank you much if that's everything if there's nothing well, else then I'll Second. So moved. We are adjourned. Thank right. you all.